Hello friends, Mikey Adams here with the Un Sunday Show. In today's show, I want to talk to you about modern day Judaizers. You're listening to the Un Sunday Show. Leaving behind religious obligation to find a more authentic expression of Christ in us. This is the Un Sunday Show. You'll remember that in the New Testament scriptures, Judaizers were those who were mixing the law of Moses with the cross. They were mixing faith in Jesus with the law of Moses. They were basically saying, it's okay to believe in Jesus, that's a good thing, but in order to be justified, you need to be keeping the law of Moses as well. It wasn't enough to have faith alone in Jesus, you need to be doing what the law of Moses told you to do. Those people were called Judaizers because they were mixing the law of Moses with grace, and grace alone was insufficient. You needed to be about doing what Moses said you need to be doing in order to be saved. Well, those people are still around, but in a little different form. Modern day Judaizers have the same basic message, but it's morphed a little bit. Modern day Judaizers might refer back to the old covenant law of Moses and pull certain things out of it that are convenient for them or convenient for their system or to promote their system of thought and then try and place those obligations on you. They don't usually bring the entire law of Moses over, but to varying degrees, they'll bring different things of it over and try to bind those things on the conscience of a believer in this new covenant age. The end result is the same. The end result is that it's a works-based religion with a little bit of gospel sprinkled on top. And that kind of a gospel is no gospel at all. The entire book of Galatians, or the entire letter to the Galatians in our New Covenant Scriptures, is dedicated to this issue. And in chapter 5, Paul reminds the people that he's writing to that in verse 1, it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery, which is what the law is and what the law was. It was a yoke of slavery. Or as Paul called it in 2 Corinthians 3, it's a ministry of death. And that ministry of death has no place in the life of believers. It's interesting that this phrase, yoke of slavery, comes right after chapter 4 of the book of Galatians, where Paul is talking about the history of Israel being under slavery to the law, because that's what the law produced. That's what the law did. Again, Paul called it a ministry of death. It's not a life-giving thing at all. And in Paul's day, the people that he's writing to were being told that they had to keep the entire law of Moses. They had to be circumcised, and they had to keep the law in addition to faith in Jesus in order to be saved, in order to be justified. But listen to what Paul said in verse 2 of Galatians 5. He said, look, I, Paul, say to you that if you accept circumcision, Christ will be of no advantage to you. I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision that he is obligated to keep the whole law. Now, modern day Judaizers aren't going to really promote circumcision, I don't think. Maybe there's some of them out there that would. But the idea is the same. Any mixing of law with grace results in the idea that you have to keep that law, keep that rule, or it somehow affects your standing with God. It somehow mars your justification. The principle is the same, even though the vehicle to get there is a little bit different. And when we cave into these rules and regulations that are brought to us by these modern-day Judaizers, just like those in Paul's day, we become obligated to keep the whole thing. If we jump into that system, we're obligating ourselves to keep whatever that system says we have to keep in order to remain justified. Whether it's reading a certain version of the Bible, or observing certain days and certain times. Whatever the law is, we're obligating ourselves to keep the whole thing. But look what Paul said in verse 4 of chapter 5 of Galatians. You are severed from Christ, you who would be justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace. 
We hear that term a lot. I used to hear it a lot more in the 1970s, I guess, this idea of falling from grace. And it was always tied to some kind of a moral failure, to some kind of a besetting sin where we just can't seem to overcome this particular thing that is hounding us. And so we cave into it. And then at that point, we've fallen from grace. But that's not the definition of falling from grace at all. Falling from grace has nothing to do with a moral failure. Falling from grace has to do with trying to be a moral success. And I mean that in terms of justification. I'm not promoting bad morals. But the idea is that by keeping some set of rules, in this case, the law of Moses, and in the modern Judaizers case, elements of the law of Moses that seem to get brought over a lot, trying to be justified by those things is what results in falling from grace. It's what results in being severed from Christ. Those are strong words. The point is, this is a verbal shocker to wake people up. If you're seeking to be justified by anything but pure grace, you've fallen from grace. Our justification is by grace alone. Well, this plays out in a number of different ways in our modern culture. One of the ways that it plays out is the idea of law and grace, that there's such a thing out there as law and grace, that law and grace are somehow companions, that law and grace can be commingled, and sometimes we need to hear grace and other times we need to hear law. That's a real popular idea in some circles and in some settings. I remember seeing this played out before me a handful of years ago. I had an acquaintance who was what you could call a celebrity pastor. He was very well known, and we would talk from time to time. We were in communication. And then it was revealed that there was some kind of an extramarital thing that went on, and so he ended up stepping down or being forced to resign from his position as a celebrity pastor. And after that happened, he and I would talk a little bit now and then. But I'll never forget that another ministry that came along that he was also loosely a part of, they used to kind of work hand in hand together, that a leader from this other ministry contacted me, not directly, but through some other people that we knew. And evidently she knew that from time to time I was talking to this individual. And so the message that I received from her was, don't talk to him about grace. Right now he needs law. He doesn't need any grace. He needs all law. And I remember kind of scratching my head going, what? And this reminded me of Paul's words in Romans chapter 6, when Paul asked the rhetorical question, shall we sin that grace may abound? And the answer that he gave was no. How can we who are dead to sin live any longer in it? And then in the rest of that chapter, Paul preached to the Romans the gospel. He took them deeper into the gospel. He didn't say, wait a second, we need to put the brakes on here. I need to give you a set of rules. We need to bring some of Moses over here. We need to introduce law now. We've talked about grace. Now it's time to introduce law. No, he didn't give them a set of do's and don'ts. What did he do? Well, you can go read it for yourself in Romans chapter 6. He gave them more of the gospel. He reminded them of what is theirs in Jesus. He reminded them of Christ's work on their behalf. He didn't pile on rules. He didn't say, look, we've got to straighten you out now. And the way that we're going to do that is by dumping a bunch of, of Moses on you. That's not what he did at all. He reminded them of who they are in Jesus. He reminded them that they've been united with the Father because of the Son. He reminded them that they have a new life. He reminded them that they have died to sin, that they've been set free from the power of sin. He didn't give them a list of rules. He didn't say, well, now hold on a minute. Let's talk about law gospel here. This is what we need to do. We need to balance you out a little bit. If you're thinking that you can continue to sin, that grace might abound, the solution is more law. The solution is Moses. No, that's not where he went to at all. For Paul, the solution was Jesus. For Paul, the solution was, let me take you deeper into the gospel. Let me take you deeper into the things of the gospel, to the truths of the gospel, and remind you of those. Why? Because the law is a ministry of death but the Spirit gives life. But that's not the message of modern-day Judaizers. Modern-day Judaizers will insist that there's law and gospel. I mean, there's been a plethora of books written on that topic of law and gospel, but it's a topic that doesn't exist in the New Covenant Scriptures. It's not there. But we're so attracted to Moses that we devise ways to get Moses into the New Covenant. You know, we have law and we have gospel, right? But those are two different covenants. 
The law is the old covenant. The gospel is the new covenant. Grace is the new covenant. And those two don't mix. The new covenant, this covenant of grace that we're living under today, has made the old covenant, the covenant of law, obsolete. That's Hebrews 8. There's no mixing of the two. There's no, well, today I'm doing pretty good, so I need grace. But tomorrow, if I sin or if I stumble in some way, I suddenly need law. No, that's oil and water. And oil and water don't mix. Law and grace don't mix. And the law has no place in our lives as believers. Our motivation is the Holy Spirit. Our motivation is the life-giving Spirit of Jesus. Our hope of glory isn't Moses in us or us performing Moses. Our hope of glory is Christ in us. Christ in you is the hope of glory. And as Paul said, he wanted to know Jesus and the power of his resurrection. We don't experience the power of his resurrection by going back into a different covenant, by going back into an obsolete covenant, by looking to Moses. There is no power of Christ's resurrection in Moses. There is no power of Christ's resurrection in the old covenant. The old covenant was filled with types and shadows that pointed to the new covenant. And it's in the promise of the new covenant and the fulfillment of the new covenant in Jesus himself and his death on the cross and his resurrection and ascension that our hope is complete. Jesus was raised from the dead for our justification. And that is apart from Moses. That has nothing to do with law. So anytime we start to mix grace and law or grace and external rules for our justification, we've fallen from grace as a principle. We've forgotten grace, because as soon as we dilute grace with anything, even a little bit of anything, grace is no longer grace. And when we do that, we've fallen from grace because we've changed grace into law. So my friend didn't need to hear law. My friend needed to be reminded of grace. This idea of law and grace is absurd, because in that scenario, law always wins out because law dilutes grace into non-grace. And suddenly grace morphs into law. And modern day Judaizers do that with anything. Any kind of external rule that needs to be added to some activity list of yours in order for you to be completely justified is law. It may not be Moses. Again, like I said earlier, it may be parts of Moses. We may bring 10, 12 things over, 15 things over. Whatever meets the requirement of whatever rule or law that we're trying to place people under. As soon as we acquiesce to that, we've moved away from grace into law. We've moved away from grace as our sole source of justification into grace plus something, which is not grace at all. And in answering that sin question in Romans chapter 6, Paul concludes, Sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. Law stirs up sin, law causes more sin, law makes sin more sinful, law turns us into lawbreakers because we can't keep the law, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and against those things, there is no law. So watch out for modern-day Judaizers because they will come to you more often than not in sheep's clothing. But at some point, they're going to draw you away from Jesus and get you to stare at your own spiritual navel and your own performance and try to convince you that, yeah, grace is great. Jesus is fantastic. But you also need to be keeping this rule, keeping this rule, keeping this law over here, doing this this way, doing it on this day, doing it at this time. You need to be abstaining from this. You need to be abstaining from that. You need to be reading these books, but not these books. You need to listen to this podcast, but not this podcast. By the way, the End Sunday Show is one that you need to be listening to. Just thought I'd say that. Because, Christian, you have been set free from the power of sin. You have been set free from the dominion of sin. And in its place, you've moved from a slave to sin to slaves of righteousness. And that is through grace alone, Jesus plus nothing. So modern-day Judaizers are hanging out everywhere. You'll find them in all kinds of environments and all kinds of situations. They're all over in religious environments and religious settings, especially because that's where they're safe to hang out. That's where it's hard to tell who they are. 
But just like in Paul's day, if anyone comes to you with another gospel and says Jesus is fine, but you need this or this, you need to add to Jesus this thing over here or that thing over there, what they've just told you is another gospel. And embracing that other gospel results in our falling from grace because we've abandoned grace in favor of law. So be careful out there. Modern day Judaizers are everywhere, they're in abundance. And remember who you are in Jesus, that you've already got everything you need for life and godliness, apart from what you do. And you're not obligated to do any of the things that they're telling you you need to do. So I'll let you go. Thanks so much for joining me again on this episode of the Unsunday Show. And until next time, you all take care. Thank you for joining us on the Unsunday Show. To be a part of this ongoing conversation, visit us online at unsunday.com.